The most exciting new feature in WBPP is custom grouping of data. Now, WBPP naturally groups data. That is its job. That's what it does. So it groups data according to basically different types. It could be uh, different exposure times. It could be by filters and so on. And that's kind of what I'm starting with here, where we have a filter, and then there are many examples that are of that type. So imagine you had a monochrome camera, and you have different filters that you're using. You have a blue filter, red filter, green filter, and so on. So these are all examples of this type. And in terms of programming, of course, WBPP isn't sentient. It doesn't know anything about filters or cameras or anything like that. But you can associate literal words, the characters, F-I-L-T-E-R, with other words, and they're called keys and values. Keywords are things that you can find, for example, I showed this earlier, in the FITS header. These words, literally filter, and this one down here, image type, these are specific keywords. And then the examples are called values because you can have many different values that are associated with a particular keyword. So, as an example, um, what you can do is you can group your light frames. Every light frame we have the keyword is written in the FITS header filter. And then we can group them according to whatever value is associated with filter for every light image. That's how we get to group all the red images together. You look, uh, you look at the word filter and what is it associated with. You'll see the, the column that is for the values and it says red or green or blue. And so you can group all of your light frames according to the filter that was used. And that allows you, of course, to match the groups that you have in your light frame data with groups that you have in your flat field images. Um, and then WBPP can do its job. Uh, image type is another one that has a group of, and just think about what the four groups are here that you're going to find in image type. But let me just be, let me just spell this out. When we talk about these keys and values, we are again literally talking about alphanumeric characters. So RED here, that is not the same as RED here. If I actually created my own filter and I named it uh, RED with a lowercase RE and a capital D, that is actually a different example than RED is here. At least WBPP would see it as a different example. So it needs to match exactly and values and keywords also shouldn't have any special characters in them. So hyphens um, and periods and exclamation points and all of that kind of stuff. So the same convention that you have for naming views in PixInsight, that same convention is carried through here when you name values. So just have concatenated either letters or numbers, and that's going to make up your keywords and your values. So did you come up with what the image types are? Of course, there are four, and they are bias, dark, flat, and light. Those are the image types that you'll see listed in a FITS header. So FITS headers then are keys and values. That's all a header is in terms of being able to um, organize data. So we're going to be adding and extending that logic with customization. We're just basically making a new keyword and a new value, but we don't have to edit, this is the cool thing, we don't have to edit the FITS header. All we have to do is edit our file names. We can specify keywords and values in our file name. Now, if they already exist in the FITS header, well, our job is done. We, don't, we can just use whatever that keyword and value is that's excellent, it's already there. Uh, but we can also spell out new ones that are anything we want, universal, grouping is what we get from this by putting it in the file name. So what WBPP actually does when we put things in a file name is it scans the file name and it will look for the key that you tell it. In a moment, I'm going to demonstrate by showing you how to tell WBPP there's, you know, this is the keyword. And what it does is it scans whatever, it finds that keyword and it scans to the stop point, says, okay, now the keyword is done. Anything that follows that is going to be the value. And then you'll, it'll continue to scan until it reaches the, the next stop character. 
So an underscore in this case is a stop character, and it is the one that is implemented here in WBPP. Sometimes uh, programs can use different stop characters or multiple ones. At the moment, the underscore is the safe one. It's the one that's guaranteed to work. So use the underscore. And so as an example, if you're going to put this keyword and value in your file name, uh, the file name might look like this, where you have a whole bunch of stuff, but somewhere in the file name you have an underscore, keyword, underscore, value, underscore, and then you're all set to do the job. Now, it's very likely that this operation of writing files out with keywords and values, that's usually done through automation. Usually in acquisition software, you can tell it how to form it. Maybe it automatically does have things in your file name that you can automatically take advantage of, or you can tell the acquisition software, please add this extra information to your file names, and then again, you're ready to do the customized grouping when it comes time to using WBPP. Keywords can be, as I say, from the FITS header or a file name. Mixing them is fine, and uh, so when I say mixing them, you can actually specify a keyword that is um, both in your file name and it's in the header. So you don't need to, well, let me give you an example. If you have something that's in your file names of your light frames, but you don't have a master flat that matches that, you can just change with uh, the file name of your master flat just with one quick edit. And then you can now group that master flat with the proper group within your uh, light frames. I will be showing you that example in just a moment. But one thing to recognize is that file name keywords and their value take precedence over FITS keywords. So if you actually have the same thing in your FITS header as you do in your file name, the whatever you write in your file name, that's the one that's going to be used. So you literally have the last word uh, when it comes to uh, specifying a custom keyword and value. So look at your FITS headers. Uh, before you go modifying your, uh, all your files, you might find that what you need is already in there. And then you don't have to change any file names. It's just already in every file for you to take advantage of. That's really cool. Some example uses of custom grouping are like when you use a German equatorial uh, mount. For those that do, you'll know why this is nice. Sometimes it matters what side of the meridian you're on. German equatorial mounts require you to flip across the meridian that rotates the, the telescope and camera 180 degrees. And that might change the way in which um, things work. And so you, you worry about taking flats on either side of the meridian. And so now you can naturally see what the keyword is. Here the keyword would be peer side. And you know how many values there are. There are going to be two values, one on the east side of the meridian and one on the west side of the meridian. Therefore, you can group the keyword by value, by these, one of these two values, and uh, you'll have two sets of files that you can have two sets of flats for because you'll have those same keywords and values in your flat um, names as well. It's just really fantastic. So the same idea works for multiple night sessions. If you have multiple nights, again, the keyword might be session or evening. And then the value can be anything you want. It could be Kermit the Frog. As long as on night one, all of the data, the keyword is session, and then night one, the value is Kermit the Frog. And then the second night, the keyword is again session. That's what we're going to tell WBPP, but the value is going to be Miss Piggy. And then the third night, the keyword is session, and the value is going to be Gonzo. Or what I'm, you know, I don't know all the Muppets, but you get the idea. Uh, so the ins uh, one of the interesting things is that by grouping data, you can actually see all kinds of attributes of your images. It's just kind of a side product of uh, being able to examine the FITS headers uh, just by specifying a keyword. It's kind of cool. The first example I'd like to show is the German equatorial mount where perhaps it matters what side of the meridian you're on. It so happens that I use, for research purposes, a German equatorial mount. Here I can even show you it is in operation right at this very moment doing cool stuff. But you can imagine it matters whether the telescope, the astrograph here, 
is on the east side of the pier, which is here, or the west side. This is the mighty MYT uh, Paramount, and it's holding a Takahashi astrograph. Uh, and uh, it's doing cool stuff. But that's the setup. Now we'll go back here, and I'll load some data that I've taken using that telescope. So we go to WBPP, and then we will load. I'm going to load... Well, I, you know what I'm going to do? Let's just load the data. So I have stuff, but I'm just going to load the lights first. And I have a lot of light frames here. I mean a lot. So there they are. There's 600 second exposures. There's blue data, green data, and red data. Now I'm going to add, I think the best thing to do is, I'm just going to add the masters as they exist right now. So if we go under the masters directory, or uh, yeah, folder. We should now find that I have a, a you know, a binning uh, bias master here, a dark masters for each of these exposure times, and flat masters in each of the color filters. So this is the normal kind of setup that you would expect to do. If we look at the control panel now, we would get kind of the normal result where we're going to be matching. Let's expand this a little bit there. We're going to match our blue data with a blue filter uh, flat field image and uh, red is going to match with red uh, and so on. But here's the thing. If it mattered whether we were on one side of the pier or the other, we're in no way are we here discriminating. So I'm going to exit out of here and show you something really cool. Within these files, if I open up one of these um, pictures of space, and we look at the file header, if it's header, here is what I was describing a moment ago. You can find a column again of all of the keywords into the right, and you'll even see it says name, which is a keyword, and then value. That's where those keys and values come from. Uh, and then, of course, what we want to look for here is the special keyword that's going to help us out. It's pure side. There it is. So the software that I use, which is ACP, it writes because it talks it talks to the sky and whatever, talks to the paramount. It knows what side of the pier it's on and it writes that to the file header for every image. It's awesome. So that's going to be my keyword and we know what the values are going to be. They're going to be east and west. Now we can go back here to WBPP and watch what happens. This is kind of magical. Watch this. We're going to, now we need to type it in exactly. P I E R side in big letters and everything. Press this button and wow, check that out. Now you'll notice we have two blues, two greens and two reds because there's now a new thing to match. It made a column with the keyword that we just made, pure side. Now notice we have keywords, uh, we have the rather the keyword here, pure side represented in our light frames, but not yet in the flats. So I just wanted to show you that you needed, of course, to be in both place, places for them to match. Because right now, this these two blues are still matching this one blue in order to discriminate between a flat field image that was on one, a blue flat field image that's on one side of the pier or the other, I need this pier side, its values to be represented over here as well so that that matching can take place. So I'm going to do some magic here for you. What I'm going to do is come here. Uh, let's see, what's the easiest way to do this? The easiest way to do this is, oh, I know the easiest way. I'm going to come back. I have them already labeled. So what I'm going to do is remove uh, these flats, clearing them, and now I'm just going to add flats that have here the differentiation. So this blue here has the keyword pier side and east, and this blue has the keyword pier side and then west. So I'm loading these guys here. And you'll see, of course, it's loading two masters. And you can see how it shows it in this panel 
in addition to showing it in the control panel, it even shows uh, the uh, keyword and the value here, keyword and value here, keyword and value here, perfect. And then we have over here now in the panel, and I'm gonna spread this so it's easy to see. Now you can see we're matching this blue, not just with any blue, but the blue that has West. So the way you can imagine these keywords and values working is it's matching everything. And then there's the Boolean and, and also needing to match this extra constraint, which is in this case, the, the value of West or the value of East. So it needs to match not only the red, but also the value of West or East. That's how you do it. So this setup would properly apply the correct flats for each of the light frames, not only the correct filter, but also the correct pot, uh, side of the pier. Uh, so this is just really a perfect example of the kind of power of using grouping here. Uh, the calibration diagram will also indicate uh, the grouping keywords peer side and west here for us as well. So we know that that's what's taking place in addition to the flow that we see being displayed there. Uh, so just really a great example. And in uh, another section, I'm going to show a slightly more complicated example, but uh, just again to illustrate this power of custom grouping in WBPP.